Hey, I am Pushpal Mukhopadhyay. In this video, I will show you how to handle missing values in survey data by using the new survey impute procedure. Proc survey impute is new in SASTAT 14.1. Before I introduce the new procedure, let's take a look at the non-response problem. Suppose you want to estimate the average income in a neighborhood. Assume that there are 70 households in that neighborhood and you select a sample of 7 households out of 70 by using a simple random sample without replacement. You mailed a questionnaire to all selected households but only 6 households respond to your survey. Household 5 did not return the questionnaire. If you take the average of the 6 respondent households, then you will estimate the average income in that neighborhood as 147. But if you have a survey statistician in your group, she will advise you not to estimate the average income in that neighborhood unless you collect information from household 5 because household 5 may be different from the other 6 households that you observed. Based on that advice, you send your best interviewer to household 5 and you find out that income for household 5 is much higher than for the other 6 households. With this new information, you estimate the average income in that neighborhood as 190. The phenomena that I just described is called non-response bias. That is, the set of respondents is differed from the set of non-respondents. Prevention is the best solution for non-response. You must try to collect information from the non-respondent units. But no matter how hard you try, you will still have non-response in surveys involving human populations. Now assume that you work for the IRS and you have tax return information available from the previous year. If you know that household 5 reported 410,000 as their annual income in the previous year, then you will not simply ignore household 5 in computing the average income for that neighborhood. I'm sure that you will try to come up with an estimated income for household 5. The bottom line is that you must have good auxiliary information to perform imputation. This is the syntax for PROC survey impute. Like all the other survey procedures, PROC survey impute also support the cluster, rape weights, strata, and weight statements. Use the cell statement to specify the imputation cells. Imputation cells define a partition of the data such that observations within the same cell are similar. For example, if you believe that income for males is different from income for females, then you partition the data by gender and perform independent imputations for males and females. You must specify the VAR statement. Missing values will be imputed only in the variables that you specify in the first statement. By, class, ID, and output statements are common in many SAS stat procedures. You specify a SAS dataset in the output statement to store the output data containing both the observed and imputed values. Proc survey impute supports several 
donor based imputation methods where the missing values in an observation unit are replaced by observed values from other units. You can use PROC survey impute to perform hot deck imputation, approximate Bayesian bootstrap imputation, and fully efficient fractional imputation. What is hot deck imputation? In this example, you have 10 balls, 6 blue balls, and 4 green balls. All balls except 2 are numbered. You want to impute the missing numbers for these two balls. First, you divide all the balls into two imputation cells based on their color. Therefore, you have a blue imputation cell and a green imputation cell. The balls without numbers are known as recipients. You select one ball at random from the blue cell and one ball at random from the green cell independently. The balls that you select are called donors. Then you take the observed number from the donor and assign it to the recipient. In hot deck imputation, different selection methods can be used to select the donors. To understand approximate Bayesian bootstrap, consider the same example where you have a blue imputation cell and a green imputation cell. You have one recipient unit in each cell, but instead of selecting one ball, you select five balls out of five balls in the blue cell and three balls out of three balls in the green cell by using simple random sampling with replacement. Suppose in the blue cell you select balls 5, 9, 5, 8 and 9. And in the green cell you select balls 2, 4 and 2. These selected balls are called the donor pool. You then select one ball at random from each donor pool as the donor. Similar to hot deck imputation, you replace the missing value in the recipient by using the observed value from the donor. In fully efficient fractional imputation, instead of selecting one donor for a recipient, you use all the donors to replace the missing value in the recipient. Consider the same example. With two imputation cells and one recipient in each cell. In the blue cell, you observe four different numbers. 7, 8, 9 and two fives. Now create four little balls for the blue cell. The weight that you assign to ball 5 is double the weights that you assign to balls 7, 8 and 9 such that the sum of the weights of these four little balls is equal to the observed weight of the recipient in the blue cell. Similarly, in the green cell you observe three different numbers. One, 2 and 4. Therefore, you create three little balls of equal weights such that the sum of the weights of these three little balls is equal to the weight of the recipient in the green cell. Thus, in the imputed data, you have nine balls in the blue cell and six balls in the green cell. Although you increase the number of balls after imputation, the sum of the weights of the balls after the imputation is the same as the sum of the weights of the balls before imputation. Notice that 
you do not introduce any additional variability due to the selection of donors. That is why this imputation method is called fully efficient. To implement hot deck imputation, use the method equals hot deck option in prox RV impute statement. The selection equals SRS WOR option for method equals hot deck request donor selection by using simple random sampling without replacement. The seed equals option specifies the random number generator seed. The n donors equals 3 option requests 3 independent imputations. The cell statement defines the imputation cells and the var statement requests imputation for the variable income. The imputed dataset will be stored in the NRHD dataset. Use the selection equals option to modify the donor selection method for hot deck imputation. The syntax for FEFI is very similar to that for hot deck, but you don't need to specify either the selection equals or seed equals option. However, all variables in the var statement must also be specified in the class statement. By the nature of this imputation technique, FEFI is applicable only for categorical variables. The imputed dataset is stored in the NRAFEFI dataset. Here is a quick review of the imputation methods available in Proxerv Impute. Use the selection equals option to request different donor selection methods. Donor selection methods include simple random sampling with replacement, simple random sampling without replacement, probability proportional to the respondent weights, and approximate Bayesian bootstrap. Use the method equals FEFI option to request FEFI. Analysis of imputed data depends on both the survey design and the imputation method. Different imputation methods require different analysis techniques. For example, to analyze hot deck imputed data, the imputation variability is often ignored. Therefore, you should use a donor selection method so that the variance due to the donor selection is negligible compared to the total variability of the estimator. In this example, the hot deck imputed data along with the jackknife replicate weights are used to estimate the average income. The weight statement specifies the weight variable and the rep weight statement specifies the jackknife replicate weights. You use the same statements to analyze FEFI data as in the previous hot deck example. Proc survey impute created the imputation adjusted weights and replicate weights and stored them in variables IMPWT and IMPREPWT. Because the number of rows in the output data is different from the number of rows in the input data, you must use the imputation adjusted weights and replicate weights to analyze FEFI data. Let's take a look at the results. We started with the same data, but applied different imputation methods to impute missing income in household 5. The row labeled as no missing estimates the mean income when there are no missing values. That is, when you collected information from household 5, the row labeled as no imputation estimates the mean income, ignoring household 5 from the analysis. The next two rows, hot deck and fefi, estimate the mean income when hot deck and fefi are used to impute the missing income in household 5. Although you used the same observed data and the same analysis technique, you get different estimates because of different methods for handling missing values in income for household 5. The estimate in the first row 
does not have any non-response bias. The standard error for hot deck imputation is the smallest because you ignored the imputation variability in the analysis. In summary, use PROC survey impute to impute missing values from complex surveys. FEFI introduces no additional variability from the imputation, but is applicable only for categorical variables. The analysis technique should be tailored to both the survey design and the imputation method. For more information, use the support.sas.com link. Thank you for watching.